I was talking to you about family, you know, the ideal Muslim family situation. The biggest thing, the biggest principle in having a healthy family, I'm not going to say ideal family because I told you there's no such thing. Even the prophets didn't have ideal family. Even they had problems in their families. The healthy, the, the, the first principle in my opinion, alam, of a healthy family is you never give up on family. You never, I don't care if your kid's doing drugs. I don't care if your, you know, your, your father's all kinds of messed up. You don't give up on your family. You stay in touch. If they're abusive, it's a different story. If they're physically abusive, if they're emotionally abusive, even though you don't give up on them, that doesn't mean you take the abuse either. The second principle is you don't accept abuse. You don't continue along with abuse. It's not healthy. You're not helping yourself. You can't say, oh, I'm just having sabr. No, 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 no. That's not sabr. That's not sabr. You're just damaging yourself. And human beings can only take so much. We're a limited container. You take so much, enough abuse is given to you and you will break, you'll snap. Crazy things will happen. You have to have, you have to draw the line. You will accept, you will take care of your parents, for example. You will do everything you can for them. But when, they, when it comes, you know, when they do something that's outright wrong, you will have to stand up and say, you know, this isn't right. And you have to, the, the elders in our community have to get involved in that. A lot of times, subhanAllah, our traditional elders in our communities, they, they are so knowledgeable, and they're so well qualified as scholars. But at the same time, they are not aware of a lot of the situations of our families. They're not just fully aware of them. So they never bring it up in their khutbahs, and their gurus, and their halaqat. They don't bring it up because they're not made aware. They're not made aware. And they're good people. The community's job is to make the leadership aware of what's happening. Because I can almost guarantee you the imams of our community, the ulama of our community, they're concerned people. They want good for the people. They want Islam for the people. So when they hear about the problems, it concerns them, and they will try to educate the community more and more, raise awareness more and more about the kinds of problems that are happening. Abuse is unacceptable. Not, not abuse from ch parents to children, not abuse from children to parents. It's unacceptable. The second thing is, uh, so, so three things I mentioned so far. One, you don't give up on family. Two, you have to draw the line somewhere. You have to draw the line. You can't just, anything goes. It's family, they can do whatever they want. No, our they did not give, give open license. It's not like that. It's not like that. We have to obey our parents. We have to obey our elders. Yes, we do. But we cannot allow that obedience to turn into abuse. That can't be, that's not right. That isn't right. So if they're violating your rights or they're, they're hurting you, then you have to have that conversation. And it's not haram for you to have that conversation. It's not wrong for you to have that conversation. On the other side also, you children have to understand, the, 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 the children here of parents have to understand that our deen, and one of the biggest priorities in our deen is respect and obedience to parents. One of the biggest priorities in our deen. Even if they're abusive. Even if they're being really bad to you. Even then. You, have, you cannot abandon the respect and love and consideration to your parents. It's a very hard line to think to balance. <laughs> it seems like opposites. But you don't, I don't love, sorry. I don't love and respect my parents only because they're my parents. I love and respect my parents because I'm a less slave. And Allah made that a priority for me. So I'm not even doing it for my parents. I'm doing it for Allah. And me not caring about my parents is actually me not caring about what Allah said. I will not have to answer to my parents for that, I will have to answer Allah for that. I, I, have, to have, I have to be very clear that my relationship with my parents is not a reaction. If they're good to me, I'll be good to them. If they're not good to me, I'm, you know, what do you do for me? What did my dad ever do for me? Why should I be nice to him? No, it's not a reactionary relationship. This relationship we have with our parents, especially with our parents, is a relationship that's based entirely on Allah's commandment. It's, a, it's unconditional. You have to have ihsan with your, both your parents unconditionally. It's not dependent on whether they're good parents or not. You have to do the best you can with them. You have to do the best you possibly can with them. Sometimes our, our elders, they do things that harm themselves. Our elders, they do things that harm themselves. Sometimes they get stressed, they cry, they yell, they scream. And you think they're doing that to you. 
But you know what? They're just as miserable. They're making themselves miserable. And sometimes they don't know how to get out of that. You have to help them get out of that. You have to, you, you cannot yell back. You have to just calm your mother down and take her for a walk and get her a flower and just work on her. And it won't happen overnight. It'll take some time. It'll take some time to get the anger problem of your dad resolved. It'll take some time. But we have to work on our parents because sometimes they make their own selves miserable. They really do. In many, many cultures in the Muslim community. Because they don't know how to deal with this changing, completely different family. They weren't the kind of kids you are. They'll keep telling you, why. I never did this to my parents. They'll tell you, I never talked back like that to my mother. Yeah, but you didn't live on this continent either. <laughs> you know, that was a different time. That was a different, the, the culture, the values, the society, it was completely different. But they don't, know how, they don't necessarily understand that. And they don't necessarily, I don't expect them to understand that. So it's going to be very traumatic for them to deal with people like you guys. You guys are pretty traumatic to deal with. You have to understand the kids in this audience. They're not easy to deal with. You're not easy to deal with by your Sunday school teacher, your, te your, your teachers, some of your friends. Forget your parents. Yeah, they're, you're not easy to deal with. You're, you're, you have a lot less patience. You talk back a lot more. You want to do your own thing all the time. You don't, you don't ever listen. And if you do, it's not because they said it once. They have to say it at least a hundred times before you listen. And even then you complain. You're not easy to deal with. So if they're upset, they have a reason too. Everybody needs to do an assessment about what they're doing wrong in their relationships. And what's going wrong in our relationships. So the, you know, this idea of how can I be a better son? How can I be a better mother? How can I be a better father? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better wife? You have to ask that question without asking the other one. Okay, okay, so the sister listening to this dubs, she goes home, she goes, okay, I'm ready to be a better wife, but what are you going to do? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't say but, what are you going to do? Don't add that part. You're going to be a better wife. Husband goes and says, okay, okay, I'm ready to be a better husband, but you're going to change too, right? Don't do that. You, see, you still haven't understood. You cannot expect other people to change. The only one you can change is yourself. You, and why? What's our motivation as Muslims? Our motivation as Muslims is we can go before Allah and say, Ya Allah, I did, I did my part. I did my part. I did what I could as a good husband. I was patient. I didn't yell. I didn't complain. She would sometimes, that's out of protest. She would say the meanest things to me. She would say horrible things about my mother. And I would just say, I wouldn't listen, and I didn't yell back at her. And I didn't tell her how much I hate her, her mother. I didn't say anything. I was quiet. You know, sometimes she didn't, she, uh, uh, you know, I came home and she didn't even say salam to me. It hurt my feelings, but I didn't say anything. Sometimes I came home and she was already sleeping. And I didn't have dinner yet. And then I tried to wake her up and she shooed me away. And I got really upset, but I stayed quiet. I was patient, and I wasn't upset the next day either. You know, I did my part, Ya Allah. I did. I'm not complaining. 